Admiral's Log, January 3rd, 1932. With my fleet deployed and ready, all I had to do was wait for an incident. And sure enough, it didn't take long before the Russians threatened us with war. The president, never one to back down, especially not to threats, declared war. As such, we are now at war with the Russians. We have two task forces at sea right now. One is near Europe, the other is near Japan. I suspect the Japanese will take offense and soon declare war. Achieving victory against either party will quickly show the world what the US fleet can do. The challenge here, however, is an interesting one. I cannot be too successful. If I am, then no other nation will dare to declare a war which would fail my mission of being victorious over every other power once. At the same time, I refuse to lose any men and ships needlessly to give the president what he wants. He might be the boss, but these are still my ships and my men that I'm risking. And I'll be damned if I don't do my utmost best to bring them home. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 2 of the American 1930s campaign. My objective for this series is beat every nation once. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to provoke some of them. I'm already at war with the Russians, now I'm also at war with the United sorry, with the Empire of Japan. So I have my work cut out for me. Over here, it seems like one Russian destroyer is being really quite aggressive against my task force, consisting of the Indiana, heavy cruisers Charlotte and Kansas, light cruisers St. Louis, and two destroyers. So let's see if we can intercept this guy and bring the first Russian down. In the meanwhile, in the Pacific, I have another task force. Battle, battleships Idaho, South Dakota, heavy cruiser Huntington, light cruisers Buffalo and Cincinnati, and destroyer Fanning. Let's see what we can do when we get a little closer to Japan. Ooh, they got a, ooh, they got a big fleet there. Mm-hmm. Do I want to engage that? Actually, not really. So let's head north and see where that task force is going. In the meanwhile, I have also been able to research a bigger shipyard. So let's make use of that bigger shipyard and get another bigger battleship out. My current class, I believe, displaces 57, yeah, 57,500 tons. I can now go up to 92,400 tons with this super battleship hull. And that immediately opens up the way to using this new and improved dockyard, which they have added in this patch. So let's get some auxiliary engines. Uh, this thing is going to be, again, a slugger from afar. The problem is, I don't really have anything more feasible than the 16s. So when it comes to actual firepower, it's likely not going to have that much more of it relative to the other battleship. That's a bit of a problem. I would love it if I could get more, and I am researching bigger guns, but it's just going to take a while. Well, well I guess we're going to have to be a little patient, which I am not that good at. Anyway, guns. Guns, guns, guns. Let's go with the 16s. Uh, I do prefer the triples over the quadruples. This does improve your target signature, of course. It just makes you bigger. Um, push this forward. Push this forward. Yes, yes. We're going to put a, a huge barbette's a bit big. Tall barbette there. There. That's 12 sixteens. The issue is trying to get all of these guns to get buffed. That's a challenge and a half. Um, mega funnel. What's the recommended speed? 33 knots optimal? Not with this level of firepower, it's not. That's for sure. If I kick off the RDF, save me some. Kick out the sonar array. Again, these are always, always going to be part of task force. Simply because they cannot survive on their own. I can, I suppose, give them secondaries. Or oh, you can give them 8-inch secondaries. Oh, I like you. <clears throat> I really like this hull. 
You're going to sit over there. You're going to sit over there, here, here. Engine efficiency leaves a little bit to be desired. Now we're looking at an engine efficiency of 111%. Armor belts, eh, it's not great. Um, let's put this thing on 27 knots, making it slightly slower. If I go for the standard gear turbines, forced boilers, no. What is this? A funnel five. Does make the ship too heavy. So that's a no go. We're going to have to rely on the diesels. Why is the ship overweight? Natural boilers. Is that the trick? Does the game remember that? Yeah. That's the trick. The game remembers the setting that you put on the boilers, making the ship too heavy. So that's less than ideal. Standard HE, of course, the best propellant, the best explosives. Uh, capped ballistic, high capacity HE. Why is my stern so heavy? Push this slightly forward, not all the way. There. That's a little better. These 8 inchers can fire out to 13.8 kilometers, reload in about 12.7. And I think I'm gonna have to use something a bit smaller as well. Something like a 3 inch or a 2 inch. So that if something does show up that's going to get closer than that, we can still deal with it. We're still not too heavy, but if I change the barrel length, we might be. Yeah, we're 10 tons over. <laughs> Fine. Okay, so these guns fire out to 8 kilometers every 3 seconds. And they're going to put out a barrage of fire the moment that something decides that trying to approach an American battleship is a good idea. We will rapidly, rapidly convince them they are utterly misguided. We're going to have to reduce armor a bit more here. Yeah, go to 3.8. Four weight offset is a bit too high. Let's go for six. And push a bit more into the main belt. There. Okay. This is the new New York class battleship. It's going to come in at 458 million. It's not a cheap ship. It makes it about, <clears throat> yeah, about 50% more expensive. That is quite the price hike, but whatever. I want one of these. I want one of these. If not, just to have a bigger hull out there. Player 3 has joined the game. War has erupted between the United States and the German Empire. So now I'm facing the Germans, the Russians and the Japanese all at the same time. I do have an active fleet of 67 ships, but that includes 40 submersibles. So subtract that, and I'm suddenly actively using 27 ships. That's probably going to not be that much, because the, <laughs> the Germans have 129. Um, this does include submersibles. You can see they got a lot of light cruisers and a lot of DDs. That's not necessarily something I like to see. So let's get a couple more Kansas built. I'm probably going to need these. Now, what you need to know about 1.09 is that it also introduces flaws. The Huntington, for example, is overweight. She has lower turret traverse, she has lower shell muzzle velocity, higher flash fire chance. Some of these ships are going to be just shit. They're going to have all sorts of issues coming out of the dockyard. And you can still scrap them. Brother Monroe has a good video about this. You can scrap them before they become operational, but you're still paying the building cost, which I don't like. Now look at this. The Vermont is 11% <laughs> overweight. <laughs> Coming in at 64,000 tons out of 57,000 tons. Right. Giving her a big, big negative to rudder shift speed, fuel efficiency, water pumping, uh, repairing anything and everything on the ship. Oof. Not great. Anyway, I want to shoot something. Where is something I can shoot? 
What is this? That's a damn submarine. I'm not looking for submarines. Let's just try and attack the port. Shall we do that? Let's see if we don't hit a mine accidentally. That would really ruin my day. As for the Russians over here, people stop fighting the Spanish and just go for me, okay? Oh, a battleship. A German battleship. Yes. Uh, where's my task force? Here. You are going to be in trouble. We're going to put everything over there and we're going to see if these guys are going to bite. A month later, the Spanish are attempting a shakedown. They would like nothing less than 396 million, which is half of my naval budget, in order to form an alliance. I don't care about an alliance, but this does mean that I'm most likely going to find myself at war with the Spanish fairly soon. Fairly soon. I'm still... actually, no, I'm still 50% positive. It's fine. Finally, we have a task force encounter. We're fighting a fairly sizable Japanese task force. This is the Shinsoku Moshun-class battleship, armed with 7 by 2 14.5-inch guns. That's a lot. A couple of heavy cruisers, a couple of light cruisers, destroyers, against my five ships. Six, sorry. Okay, let's do it. We got eyes on the Japanese battleship over here. Lots of firepower on the stern, not so much on the bow. Effectively, what they can bring to bear? Probably just the A and the B turret. So, I'm not that scared of this thing. Let's see. Uh, your 14 and a half inch guns probably cannot shoot as far as mine. What's your firing range, tops? That's the 16... 26 kilometers. That's still respectable. I can do 33. Now, before this patch hit, there was this issue where ships couldn't actually do that. Because they always just doggedly stuck to the maximum range that their ships, or that their shells were initially supposed to be. So I'm not sure if this is actually going to work. Accuracy, less than a percent. Considering the amount of targets versus the amount of ships that I have, I could be in trouble. Where are you going, Idaho? The Idaho is just supposed to follow the Dakota. Here we go. 0.2% chance to hit. What are you trying to shoot? Why that? Why not this? This is the biggest ship. Easiest target. It's the biggest threat. Stop being stupid. Okay. Huntington. Cincinnati. Buffalo. Let's go. Uh, fanning, don't torpedo anybody yet. Let's see, accuracy, now 18%. That's more like it. That's a lot better. Ooh, that was close. So what do we got here? You're a light cruiser, I imagine. A couple of 6-inch guns. Torpedoes in slightly odd positions over there. Also on the stern. Means you're the heavy cruiser. You got sort of six inch gun. That's another light cruiser. Or a heavy cruiser, and this would be a light. What did the AI build? They had heavy cruisers. These must be heavy cruisers. They're just really weird. Okay, fine. Put the secondaries on that. Their maximum range is 11 kilometers, so we're not there yet. You have to be a little bit patient. The fanning. Your torpedo range is 14 clicks. It does put this into torpedo range, so let's go. Blocked. Blocked. Okay, battleship switch to high explosive. Blocked. Okay, they got a lot of deck armor, probably. Everybody else, engage this ship here. Planning, not yet launching torps. Oh, the ship's dodging. Oh, there we go. Fanning is launched. Shells out against the battleship, and now we're getting some damage in. Ooh, big damage. <clears throat> we penned the main tower for 1,200 damage. That's really nice. They're trying to return fire, but I'm not that scared. 
Let's put smoke on the fanning. She can draw some fire. And over here, we got one of those crazy heavy cruiser things. Light, light cruiser? Whatever. It's a cruiser. And it is starting to take some fire from the primaries from probably the Huntington. And Cincinnati. Cincinnati and Buffalo are also engaging the threat. Excellent. That's what I want to see. Here's the Idaho. Serious elevation on the guns. Serious elevation. If I can knock out their main tower, that would of course be very much appreciated. I don't care much for all of these destroyers. Their torpedo range is 22 clicks. Okay, we're going to come around. You're going to come around. Everybody's going to come around. I don't trust these at all. This many torpedo boats? Well, I mean, they're destroyers, but same difference. This many ships? Spells doom. It means you got torpedoes coming at you. There we go. One way or another. And there's probably going to be a lot of them. Fanning, you're going to have to try and do some fancy maneuvering. The Dakota might just be able to catch them in time. We got Antitorp 2. It probably won't be too comfortable, but hey, we'll be, we'll be alive, most like. Everybody start dealing with this. Secondaries on this. Fanning is okay. Idaho is okay. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. Dakota, keep turning to port. Keep plunging shells into that battleship. 100 damage, 300 damage. More torpedoes coming this way. Huntington, Cincinnati, Buffalo, turn around. Again. What? Ah, oh, that was not my torp. Somebody landed a torpedo, so the AI is still dumb as bricks when it comes to being able to torpedo itself. Torpedo over there. Finding detected more torpedoes. Did you really? I still don't know what, it, what my chance is to pen this battleship, so for now I don't really mind sticking with HE. It's just consistent damage. And consistent damage means the ship is going to be less likely to accurately return fire. There's another torpedo over there. That's... Not great for the battleships. Hmm. Yeah, the cruisers are fine too. Okay. <clears throat> Perfect. Continue your circles. We got the heavy cruiser Tengu over here. Still out of range. <clears throat> Come on. Give me an ID. Boom. 2,000 points. 2,800 actually. Okay, my friend. What's your status? You've been fairly badly battered. You're crewed by cadets, which means that in tandem with your accuracy damage, or your, your damage from accuracy, your actual <laughs> chance to hit's about a, less than a percent. Can I pen? Yes, fairly well. Let's go with AP. See if we can punch some holes in this guy. Longitudinal weight offset is 100. You gotta love the AI and its... Curious tastes, <clears throat> shall we say, when it comes to designing ships. Partial pens. Ooh, destroyed main tower. Good luck with that. Damn it, more torps? Come on. As long as the battleships aren't going to be badly hit. Oh, you did get a torpedo hit. Okay. Boom, flooding. Yes, thank you. A little while later, South Dakota and Idaho, sorry, Idaho are doing mostly okay. The same cannot be said for the Buffalo, which took a big torpedo hit. She is... Nah, not quite dead in the water. But effectively not moving. 
I mean, she's just refusing to accelerate whatsoever. The Huntington and Cincinnati, still operating as the front line, still trying to detect and defeat enemy torpedoes by just telling me about them. The destroyer's still fine, yet when it comes to damage, it's contributed absolutely nothing. The battleships, however, have, and Shinsoku, their main battleship, and their only battleship for this group, is rapidly, rapidly dying. That is how I like to see things. We're gonna try and put the secondaries here on the Jitsu, and I'm hoping that I can put out the Japanese in one big battle, this one, so that I can get my victory against the Japanese, and that would cross off one of the guys that I want on my kill list. The objective for the campaign, win once against every nation. And I mean win a war, not a battle. Win a war. There we go, Fanning doing some damage. Perfect. Come on, finish her off. She's flooding. 24% of crew is dead. Oh boy, that was fairly close. Are these sneaky torps? Yeah. No. Yeah, they're electric torpedoes. Crap. So that's going to be difficult to spot. Let's go with HE against these cruisers. Just one or two hits ought to do it. Turn the rest of the ship around. Bring the cruisers back in. And try to save the buffalo. 100% chance to hit. Okay, Dakota. Make me proud. Boom. Headshot. Next is the Tengu. 30% chance to hit. 45. That was an expensive headshot. 112 million. You put torpedoes on something, it instantly becomes really, really expensive. And having 38 knot speed is also not exactly helping their condition. Ooh. I almost thought... Yeah, it did hit. It overpenned. No, it, it partial penned the secondary tower. That hit. Almost 6,000 damage. Now, this guy, Kashimayari, is a threat. And I am suspecting that she will try to torpedo me very soon. Yeah, her torp range is 12-3. She doesn't have the torp range yet. As for the rest, they're still all the way over there. They're kind of circling the wounded buffalo. I'm trying to torp it, and there's nothing I can do about it. There goes Tengu. Let's see if we can hit this guy, but... I kind of doubt it. It's really quite far away. After a bit more fighting, we're now approaching the group of destroyers and light cruiser that are still harassing me from the flank. Huntington leading the charge, going up against the Yugiri, which has already expended almost all of her torpedoes. The same cannot be said for the Kuma. The Kuma is definitely a big torpedo hazard. So let's change direction. This is Huntington, Cincinnati and Fanning. And make sure that that entire torpedo salvo just misses. The battleships, in the meanwhile, might be able to pitch in against the Yoshima. Oh boy, you're too close, Cincinnati! Jesus. Yeah. I think we're finding ourselves in the midst of a whole group of enemies. So it is definitely in my benefits to end this battle fairly swiftly. The challenge is... I need to first eliminate a bunch more ships. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Try and go over there. Huntington, turn please. Thank you. These guys are still firing HE. That's the battleships. And I suspect I can just melt the Yoshima over here with one big hit from a 16-inch gun. My explosive. Come on, here it comes. Boom. 11,000 damage and you're not dead? Okay. Just needed a bit more convincing. Next is the Kuma with the secondaries on the Fuyo. Uh, you're gonna turn, you're gonna turn, you're gonna turn. Oh, we should be fine. Let's see. You've expended your torps. 
So you're not that much of a threat. Huntington, go for Amatsukaze. Yeah, the battleships are perfectly fine. Battleships are doing exactly what I want them to, to do. Deal with the biggest threat first, eliminate that, and then follow up... What? Follow up with eliminating the smaller ships. Of course, under the guidance of the heavy cruiser and the destroyer. Because they definitely need help. The battleships themselves are huge sitting targets, huge sitting ducks. And they will die fairly quickly if you leave them unattended. So, <clears throat> always guard your big guns. Focus on Fuyo, please. Kill that destroyer, thank you. Kill this destroyer next. Don't let the dying Amatsukaze ram you. Get the Huntington to kill the Fuyo. Battleships, target, Kuma. Switch to Fuyo. Kuma's 12 kilometers out. Come on, swing the guns. 100% chance to hit against the DD? You guys are really, really accurate today. I like it. Really, really, really accurate. Also, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that I still haven't lost a ship. I might have just jinxed it right now, but for now, I haven't actually lost anything. How did you die? Swift 16-inch to the head, pretty much. <clears throat> Leading to sudden loss of life to the tune of uh, about 26, 27,000 points of damage. What we got there? Destroyer Yugiri. Okay. There is still a heavy cruiser about. Some are fairly far away, but it now seems to be interested in joining its fellow Japanese sailors on the bottom of the ocean. I will be happy to send them there if they so desire. Fanning taken some damage, but dished out 11k? That is actually really quite impressive. Now, I'm happy with the outcome of this battle, so we're going to end the battle, take the victory points, and go home with everybody. Well, alive, but not strictly intact. I call that a win. Of course, we took various damages to various of our ships. It's going to take some time to get these guys repaired. Some time, especially since I am out to sea pretty far. Uh, I was operating over here, I think. So yeah, I'm going to have to send these ships home. Make sure they get fixed. Because at the moment, I think... Yeah, the damage isn't that bad. But I still want to get them fixed. So, that'll conclude this episode. Next episode, maybe an encounter with the Germans. Maybe with the Russians. Maybe with the Japanese again. We'll just see who decides to come after me. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon for more videos.